When you and I experience the world, our brain acts like a filter. And much of what goes on around us, we don't even notice. The person with autism does not have that filter, and the world can be an overwhelming place. For them, the social world can be very confusing, and this can lead them to withdraw from social interaction or just not pay attention to it. When a parent is concerned about autism and brings those concerns to a pediatrician, currently the pediatrician uses a simple questionnaire to screen for whether the child is showing autism symptoms. And that's a good start. But unfortunately, that questionnaire overdiagnoses autism and leads to needless concerns on the part of parents. Could we come up with a way that a computer could detect whether the child is displaying autism symptoms? When we started working in this area, our first goal was to put cameras inside a clinic that was actually already trying to screen and diagnose for autism in this particular case. And we slowly learned that it was a very challenging task. We realized, together with our colleagues at, at Duke, uh, particularly in, the, in Duke Health, that the only way to scale up and to have technology that will give access to everybody is to develop an app. All we had to do was to figure out how to put Jerry's expertise inside a phone. In order to develop an app, that could tell us whether a child is showing autism symptoms. We designed a set of videos that would elicit different behaviors that we know are important for diagnosing autism. One of the videos is a woman who's singing nursery rhymes. Now, a typical child, when they're watching that video, will start smiling, and they'll often turn around and look at their parent and share that experience with their parent. Now, the child with autism typically doesn't smile, and they often don't share that experience. Another example is a little puppet video, and there's certain events that happen in the interaction between the puppets that typical children find very interesting. During one of the videos, the examiner who's in the room calls the child's name. Now, a typical child will tend to turn around and look at the person who's called their name. Remarkably, the computer in the iPhone or iPad can detect that change in where the child's looking, and they can even tell us how quickly the child looked. And these subtle differences are really important indicators of risk for autism. Given an image of a face, we first detect the face, and then from there we use machine learning algorithms and computer vision algorithms to detect landmarks around the face. And from there, we're able to look at expressions like surprised, happy, joy, fearful. One of the things that we realized very early on is to engage in such a project. We needed a very large, but also a very interdisciplinary team. We needed people from computer science, from electrical engineering, app developers, people from psychiatry, from psychology, from neuroscience. And coming together with all these different perspectives, we're able to create something that none of us could create by ourselves. When we found out that we could use this app even in the home, we knew this was a game changer. This means that we could potentially screen for autism even in areas where they don't have access to a trained professional, meaning that many more children throughout the world will have access to early intervention we're very excited about the results of our first two studies. We were very happy to find that pediatricians found it easy to use, parents were receptive to using it, and most importantly, the children did respond differently to the videos depending on whether they had autism or not. I don't think this great challenge could have happened at any other place but Duke University. Every time, every week, we had a new problem that we didn't anticipate, and that problem needed the involvement of a different part of Duke organization. And every time we discovered that we needed that, we got the feedback and the support from Duke University with the right people to do that. The, the great support we got at Duke University went all the way up to Apple, including Jeff Williams and Alan from Duke, who is currently the COO of Apple. When many people think about autism, uh, they focus on uh, the impairments that go along with autism, and that's difficulties in 
interacting socially, and communicating. What I like to think about is the amazing potential and gifts and talents of people with autism. And what excites me about my job is to help each individual with autism reach their full potential and to be able to use those talents to make our world a better place. And that's the kind of work that's occurring here at Duke. Not just a tiny step forward, but something that completely changes the way that we view the world and the way that we can help people and improve their lives.